G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. My name's Rod and I'm from the Learn to Paint Academy. And this week we're going to do a little, uh, a different view, I guess, of an Australian landscape. It's a view where I took a photo from the side of the road. Let me show you the photo. And I'm standing up on a, the road with a little bit of a foreground interest. Got these very strong trees in the foreground. And then we've got this view through to Mount Nindri. Now, as always on Learn to Paint TV, we're going to use the more method of painting. It's a method that I've taught to more than 30,000 students now around the world. And it's all about simplifying the painting process right down. So we're going to look at three steps. We're going to use three colors and three brushes and keep it really, really simple. And I'll show you how to break a what looks like a complex subject down into just a handful of shapes and a very basic little painting that anybody can have a go at, even if you've never painted before. So today I'm painting on a 11 inch by 14 inch canvas panel board, um, ideal for framing. And we're gonna start out with step one. I'll use this little flat brush here, okay? A little tiny one, swish it in some water. I've got my blue and my red, so I'll just mix up a little dark with those two colors, okay? Don't fuss over your mix, just make a little dark tone there. There we go. And Get plenty of water into that. We want that to be an ink-like consistency. We don't want that to be thick paint because in this drawing step, we're just really roughing out our, our ideas. Now, if we have a quick look at the photo again, okay, you've got this foreground. It's not very pronounced. I'm going to make the foreground a little bit more definite from the middle distance. And we're going to move that gum trees to the right and we're going to move Mount Mindry to the left. A little bit of artistic license here okay so we want the foreground to be a little bit stronger a little bit more pronounced okay so i'll pop it there and it'll have some little fence posts and things on it um, and we'll put in some warmer flowers right but this is big shape number one i always like to break my subject down it doesn't matter if i'm plain air painting or painting from a photo reference i like to break it down into a number of big shapes right so there's big shape number one Big shape number two is where Mount Nindri is going to sit. Um, well, let's keep the horizon line fairly low for this. So we'll pop, pop there, and then we want Mount Nindri to sit kind of there. Okay, like so. And then there's another mountain range that sort of dissects that there. There's some nice rocky escarpment, although this is off in the distance, right? So that becomes this mountain range in here. If you look there, along there, back along this line, the outer line of it here, it becomes big shape number two. Okay, that, that shape there. Don't worry about the details in there right now, we're just in getting our big shapes placed onto the canvas correctly. So by virtue of that fact, we've, big shape number three fits there, right? That's the middle distance sort of field. Simple, right? And what that means, of course, is that the sky becomes big shape number four, virtually paints itself, okay? That only leaves us then the gum trees. Now, we're not gonna paint the gum tree in immediately. Um, we will block it in as a dark. So the main gum tree runs up through there like that. You can see how I've moved it off. It's a little bit more centered in the photo. Okay, so you get this main gum tree there. And maybe we'll run, you know, little branches off there. And then we've got this secondary, more of a sapling style of gum tree there which means we're gonna have foliage in here we'll reduce the amount of foliage from the actual um photo right um but th th these trees here they're, they're big shape number five so we got one two three four five treat those all as one big shape and by thinking of it that way you can see that we've in just a few minutes we've simplified down the overall painting so that's step one of the more method of painting. That is our drawing. And you can see how quickly it comes together. Just as long as we've got those big shapes in the right spot, that's what we're mostly concerned about here. So our next step therefore is our blocking step. We need to block in our darks. Now, we have to think about this because we're painting in acrylics and, and oils as well. We wanna go with our darkest darks first. So it's gonna be these two gum trees, right? And our foliage there. I'm going to overpaint the foliage and overblock it in, and then we'll cut back into it um, as we continue on with the painting, right? So it's going to be our darkest darks. Then our next darks are going to be there's a tree line there running along there, um, and then this mountain range. Okay, we'll get into that, 
and then the foreground and the sky. So let's get underway. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush, a medium sized flat brush. Okay. Get in that darkest dark. We'll take our blue again. And again, we want to keep this paint during the blocking phase. We want to keep it fairly loose paint, which means water into that mix, or if you are painting in oils, whatever solvent you're using to um, thin out your paint, um, or whatever medium, I highly recommend water mixable oils, and therefore you just add a little touch of water like I'm doing here, right, to thin that paint down. So let's get our main character into this, um, you know, it's really this gum tree here, right? It's like a frame for the whole painting. We'll pop in a side branch that runs out of the side of the painting there. Maybe we have another one there. Okay. And that's going to be our main character there. Okay. A little bit like that. Don't worry about getting it perfect just yet. And load the tip of the brush. I'm just going to run that tip back and forward. So I just want that tip there to be loaded with paint. Okay, and you just have to be careful. I could go to a smaller brush. So if you're a bit nervous about getting a thinner line, then by all means go to a smaller brush to do this one. Okay, and it also has some branches running off. Okay, something like so. Now we need to get in some foliage. So I'm going to go a little bit looser, a little bit more water in that paint. And I'm just going to block it in fairly chunkily. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. Fairly thick in there. Okay, and probably in there. And we can cut back into that. Now don't overdo it. I don't want it to grow too much here, right? But we can easily cut back in to that foliage and let's get some white into that mix okay a little bit more blue so this has to be a bluey gray okay so it's got a bit of red in there already let's add a little touch of the yellow just to gray it back a bit if it goes a little bit green that means we need a little touch more red in there a little touch more blue okay now we don't want this to be too strong uh, but we don't want it to be too weak either. It's a little bit of a balancing act, this one. So let's just test this. Yeah, that's not bad. I think that, that'll work. Get that shape of mountain injury in there like so. But just take your time, work around. If you pick up a little bit like I just did then of the dark, don't panic. Just integrate it because we need to have some integration of those colors anyway. Okay. And you can see on the palette there that this little mix, mix in the middle is darker than what I had there for that uh, mountain range, right? See that? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run in a row of trees down in through here. And I don't, at this point, you don't have to slavishly follow the photo um, if you don't want to. Just use the photo as to get the general idea of what we're doing here. Now what I am going to do though is just mix up this Earthy tone, our alizarin crimson and our yellow ochre. Okay, and get a little touch of that water in there. And I'm going to use that to get in our underpainting here for our grasses. Okay. I want these grasses to be nice and warm, so therefore having a warm tone in the foreground as the underpainting is a good idea. Pick up some grasses in there. Don't make it a nice solid line. Make it a bit rough, okay? Now, this ready orange tone 
for those of you who are a student of painting um, and you've studied color theory and so on it's a complement of greens isn't it so way off in the distance they're quite gray so we'll go the white the yellow ochre pick up some of this gray okay and you can see there we haven't really got enough yellow into that and then my brush is dirty so I'll get all the dirt out of the brush okay. and then we'll come back into our yellow it's going to be on the yellow side even though it's the yellow is difficult to detect but something like that let's test that now this is sitting right up in here So it's going to be quite a muted tone. It's way off in the distance here. There's a little bit of it just in there. A hint of it, right? You can cut back into some of those trees a little bit. I'm picking up a little bit of that dirt and it's just helping us to mute that tone a little bit as well, which is good. Okay. I'm going to pop that in here. So it's going to give us a nice um, in a gradual build up of the strength of our field colours in here push it up into some of those trees a little bit don't have a flat hard line good get a little bit of green in there so we'll take a little touch of our cobalt blue in there just push it now I've got a fairly great color so it's going to be hard to get it a, a punchy green but we can get it a, a little bit on the green side with a touch of blue and yellow okay and that'll just help us to uh, just mix up the variety there a little bit Um, this is the west over here so maybe going to have ready yellow sunset tones but in any event we, the sky needs to be one of our lighter values so we're going to come in here with this big chunk of white there right we'll come in here with a punch of red and a punch of this yellow mix it all up and see what we've got okay a little bit on the pink side so we'll get a little bit more yellow okay I'll get a pinch of water now with a sky I don't like to tend my blocking tends to be my my uh, one and only pass at the sky generally so I'll take a little bit more time and a little bit thicker paint see that big chunky amounts of paint okay so we're going to put that into the sky here a little bit on the pink side but that's okay um, just to give it a hint of that afternoon light okay Go a little touch redder down the bottom here now this is quite thick paint so hopefully that mountain range is dried off just a little bit and again I'm going to use you've got to be careful you don't create a halo effect around that mountain very easy to end up with pop in some of that light in through there and I've got fairly thick paint there but I still need to work fairly quickly I'm going to take our another chunk of the white here now and get into this blue okay doesn't want to be bright blue so see that it's a light fairly muted blue there again quite large chunks of that and work around that color we've already done don't paint into it just yet okay so you have to do this fairly quickly or you need to use a retarder in your sky colors which slows down the drying time okay 
forget about working into the trees just at the moment. What I want to do is just connect this section here first, and then we can come back into the trees. Okay, so I paint it up to the other section, give the brush a slight clean, the pull the water out of the paper towel with a bit of paper towel. So I've got a fairly dry brush. And then what I want to do is just come in here and just connect the edges here. Okay, do it fairly loose, fairly randomly. Don't fuss with it. Okay, just bring the two colors in to each other. Okay. All right, there you go, folks. That finishes step two of the more method of painting, our blocking. And, uh, you know, overall, I think we're looking good. It's going to be a nice little painting. I'm now going to let this dry off before we tackle step three. I want it to be bone dry with being acrylics. Um, even if you're using oils or water mixable oils, it's good to go and have a break at this stage just to let the paint set off a little bit, which it will. Um, so give it half an hour to an hour. Uh, go and have a cup of tea, right? And then come back and, and this will be perfect then for us to dry, uh, to work into. And, and most of what we're gonna do is gonna be really detailing up the tree, these trees here, and the foreground, right? And then a little bit of detail in the background. We won't touch the sky. I think when the sky settles down, it will look lovely with that glow of red there. So we won't touch that. Um, but, you know, we're on track and it's gonna end up a great little painting and I'll pop it in a frame so you can see the end result. So, I'll see you in step three shortly. Okay, folks, well, this has had a chance to dry off and uh, it's looking good. We're now gonna move into step three of the more method of painting, which is all about getting in the details, the highlights, little finishing touches. So there's not a lot for us to do here. I'll keep this one fairly simple and straightforward so that anybody, regardless of what level you're at, you can have a go at this one and um, be confident that you're gonna do a good job of it. So where we'll start is I'll start to uh, strengthen up the darks in the main tree here. And so I'm just mixing our blue, red, and yellow. Okay, it's on the blue and red side at the moment. Yeah, I want you to get that confidence that, hey, I can actually do this um, just by following along. And uh, you can do it. We've taught more than 30,000 students now around the world how to get started painting. They've been through our, one, uh, our free course at the Learn to Paint Academy. Um, so you can do this. If they've been able to do it, then absolutely you can do it too, right? So the thing is to have the right working methodology and to uh, and just follow the process that we're, we're teaching you here. And so for that reason, I'm not going to overly detail this painting. I'm going to keep it simple that a beginner could do, okay? If you're more of an advanced painter, then um, watching along, you'll get insight as to what the best working process is or an effective working process that a lot of people have used and um, by all means detail it up further if you want from the reference photo there okay so i'm just need to strengthen up these darks um, because these are our darkest darks in the painting right and i'll get that in first so that we can then work over that. Okay, I won't do too much of the foliage, I'll do a little bit. I can hear it to paint a little thin in there. So we'll get a little bit of that in there. Make sure you don't have hard edges on the foliage, okay? So you notice I'm scrubbing it around. That's really so that I get softer edges in the foliage there. You don't want hard edges where you've got leaves, um, you know, might be blowing in the wind or whatever. So there we go. So I've strengthened that up. You can see automatically that that's um, quite a lot, uh, a lot more strength into that dark. Let's now get into some of our foreground, right? So we'll jump into some blue. And so you can see there how I've mixed the paint and it's... Uh, broken color in there. So let's just get in some wispy sort of green grasses. I'm using a, a medium sized brush, so I don't want to try and get this too detailed in here. It doesn't need to be overly detailed, right? Let's get in some different tones. Now we'll get a little bit darker, we'll add a little bit more blue, a little bit more yellow ochre, 
we get some of those darks happening in there. I'm going to pop the darks down into this corner. And notice there's plenty of, and I said I was going to do this a little bit on the abstract side, so um, I'm not going to take the time to paint every blade of grass. I just want a simple way of being able to represent a grassy embankment here where we're standing. But notice that there's plenty of that uh, blocking tone, that orangey tone, that earthy tone that we wanted. Okay, there's plenty of that coming through here. I'm not painting it out completely. Okay. Why am I painting it out completely? Because we want a little bit of that coming through, a little bit of that earth colour. Okay, we'll just get in a little, a few little wispy bits of brighter tone in there. Now, how simple is that, right? Now, again, I'm doing this as a, an approach that a beginner can follow, but all of a sudden we've got this little grassy embankment there. It's just nice and bright, you know, and, and uh, warm tones, so it will come forward and it'll push everything else into the background. And it's effective. You know, that's probably the most important thing, is that this is uh, effective sort of look to it. You can almost imagine yourself standing on the side of the road, looking down into the valley there. Some little shifts in tone. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing the blue and the red and the white to get a light blue, right? Um, it's a lot lighter than how that's dried. And then I'm going to add in some yellow ochre into that, right? So we get a warmer version of that. But we need to keep it fairly light. Okay. Something like that should work. And what I want to do is just run there's a little bit of a hillside in there. I'll just run in a little bit of highlight tone in there. Just like treetops there where the sunlight would be catching a little bit of trees but you got to keep that green quite muted okay now if you don't understand how to achieve that then you might be uh it might be a bad idea for you to check out our color mixing course at the learn to paint academy and that will teach you then how to gray colors off and how to mute them and so on pretty important sort of skill to develop when you're learning to paint is how to mix color okay and again we just want to try and capture the feel of some light clipping along the top of those distant mountains there and that gives just the tiniest little hint of detail out in the distance there, right? So now we can come to this green here that we've got. We can add a bit of blue to that. Okay. And then we can add a little pinch of the white to maybe just grey it back a bit. Just get a nice little green like so. It needs to be a touch darker, I feel. There we go. Okay. It's not an overly bright day, so we don't want... And I've painted it as though the sun's going down, so we don't want to... Uh, Paint too bright on the tops of our trees here. Okay, now I'm just really just scrubbing that paint on to create these little treetops. Pretty simple, right? Anyone could do that. Just want to bring it up into there a little bit. Now, if you get if you're worried that the tone you've mixed is not quite right, just go back and paint most of it, but allow the original tone to come through as well. Okay, reshape the trees a little.
we're getting close to you know a simple easy to do landscape designed for absolute beginners even though our subject our photo is quite a complex one with lots of information we have done this painting using the more method of painting in such a way that you can have confidence having a go at it and one over there like that Whoop. it's a bit a bit big i'll just blur that one because it's not really where we want the eye looking anyway okay they need a little bit of uh highlight tone so we'll get a bit of white a little bit of that yellow ochre, a little pinhead of the red. Okay, notice that it matches the sky color where the light's source is. So the advantage of using a limited number of colors in your palette. And just needs a little bit of water just to keep that paint fluid. Or if you're using oils, then you, you know a little bit of whatever solvent or medium that you're using uh, will do the trick. And pop a little bit of a branch out there where the cockatoos can sit. They tend to bite off the ends of the bushes, so they've got spots to land. And at least I think that's the reason. Probably just because they're mischievous little buggers. A few more little twigs and things. Pop some bark and things like that. Okay. So now we've got these trees in silhouette, but we do want to put a bit of colour and tone into them. So we'll take our white, use this pile here, get a little bit. A little bit darker. Now this tone here will probably work for the um, mid tone, I suspect. Let's have a look. Now initially, when I put this on, it's going to not look right, um, but when we work it in, it'll be fine. I'm going to leave a bit of that dark there. Okay, you can see I've got a little bit of that dark coming through, which works. You get a little bit more red and yellow into that. Probably a little bit of the blue. And, and this is uh, easy to know what to mix when you use a limited palette, if you understand color mixing and so on. Um, the limited palette just really helps you to make the decisions as to what colors to mix up. Okay. So again, I'm not going to overly detail this. I think that level of detail right there is more than enough and we'll pop some highlights on soon. If I was trying to do a painting that I was going to exhibit um, or put into a gallery or so on, then of course we would spend a bit more time in the detail and bringing this together. But because we're just here to learn, uh, and it's this project's designed for that beginner to get a bit of confidence and get started, right? So now I'm going to take this brush here and we need a eucalypti type color. So we'll get yellows in there, get a little pin of red, and get the rest of that blue. Okay. And there it is. That's that's pretty much what we want, maybe a little bit brighter. Okay. 
pull the paint out of the brush. So I'm going to do uh, this with this brush. We generally want a little bit of paint in the tip of the brush, really. And then we're going to just come in, we're going to scrub the paint around here. Very light touch. Don't lose all the darks, okay? That's a, a key point here. So there's hardly any paint on that brush. Like so. Perhaps just get a little bit brighter in a couple of spots, although in the photo there's not much that's bright, but just to match our foreground, it will be worthwhile. So take some of that cadmium yellow, mix it to the side. Okay. Same thing, pull the paint out of the brush, just load up the tips. Well, there you go, folks. This is our little landscape here with the gum trees on the hill and a view through to Mount Nindri. Hope you've uh, enjoyed doing this episode. I, I, I've certainly enjoyed it and um, definitely have a go at doing this one because it teaches you elements of the landscape from a different perspective than what we might normally do, doing it in the portrait sort of format and also learning how to move elements in the painting to create a better painting than what the photo maybe is offering you so i think there's a couple of key lessons there and just the fact that we've kept it really really simple um, i think if you approach it from that way where you just keep it really simple then you can definitely improve your painting um, with that sort of mindset rather than getting overwhelmed with all the detail so i hope you've enjoyed this one i've certainly enjoyed it let me know how you go with it make sure you look up our facebook group just search facebook for learn to paint oils and acrylics and come and join us there and show us your version of this uh of this episode um, in the group there that'd be awesome and if you haven't done so already make sure you register for our free course at the learn to paint academy it's the learn to paint introduction course and in there i talk more about the more method of painting and how you can use it and there's four different painting demonstrations as well for you to have a go at um, so i'll pop the web address underneath me here somewhere and uh, please go and register and um, join us in the free course we'd love to see you there Hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers.